and it really inspired me to start making some of the art myself. Yo ho ho sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and I'm back with part three of my creative journey story. I think we're gonna finish it up here, and we're gonna be halfway through this case, which I'm gonna open over the course of six weeks. This is set three of the One Piece card game, Pillars of Strength. It's called in English. I'm not sure what the Asian or Japanese name is, but the cards look really cool. Pulled some really cool stuff so far. The wanted card already came out. It was Doflamingo, so I don't think we get another one card out of the case. But it was exciting to see that. Still haven't pulled any alt art leaders yet. I'm just going to bless them this one off the top. So basically in this story, uh, if this is your first time here also and, and, and you like seeing One Piece cards get opened and you wanted to hit that subscription button, it would be really cool if you did. And if you're a returning member, let's continue on this journey and talking about. So basically the last place I left off was I was talking about how I kind of figured out how to make something that nobody else was making. And I think that's how you can be the best at making something in the world is when you're making something in a way that nobody else in the world is making. Oh, Sogeking, just like that, right out of the pack. Wow, very cool, very, very cool. Um, I think that's the only hit in this box, but we're gonna keep going through because I'm telling a story. Uh, so, oh, he's from Sniper Island, by the way, if you didn't know that. He's the, he's the mysterious man from Sniper Island. Um, so yeah, I started printing on fabric, making pants without pockets, no side, or with pockets and no side seam, which was, I think, pretty original, unique idea that I don't think anybody else was really doing. And um, I uh, I got into, I was really into the uh, Dragon Ball Heroes card game, and I got into the Dragon Ball Super card game in the US. There's a whole story about that. I've talked about it on podcasts and told the story so many times, so you may be able to find it somewhere, but I'm not going to tell that whole story right now because it's a long one. Um, but... I, yeah, so I started, uh, I started playing cards and I got into the card game and actually somebody at one of my locals was like, man, if a one piece card game came out, like I would totally drop that for Dragon Ball. And I was like, what? Dragon Ball is such a good game. And he's like, yeah, one piece is just a better story. And I was like, oh, I'll be the judge of that. So I read one piece and sure enough, one piece is a way better story than Dragon Ball. I love Dragon Ball, but one piece is like an insanely good story. Um, so I started, uh, I started reading One Piece, I got really into it, and um, I was playing a Dragon Ball game, and I was just hoping that a One Piece card game would come out at this point. I was like, man, I hope a One Piece card game comes out, I hope a One Piece card game comes out. And eventually, I actually just tried to start like manifesting it. I was like, all right, if I get super into every One Piece card, maybe a One Piece card game will come out. So I started buying every One Piece card game thing that existed before. I tried to find all the One Piece card games that existed before. I did, if you go back in my YouTube video history, there's videos of me going over the card ass game, there's videos of me going over um, the AR card ass formation, there's videos of me going over the um, wafer cards. Like, I looked for everything. And, you know, I have a background in art, so I'm trained at looking at stuff. and. Uh, compositionally the cards looked interesting to me I was curious about decisions they were making about framing and I really liked the AR card ass formation cards because they were basically just full arts there's no text on the card um, there was a, a QR code on the back that you would scan into your phone to get the character in a, in a game it was an AR game and the art was awesome they also have these rarities called king rares that just look like super super cool I love that rarity so I got really into opening those, and, or not opening, I did open a couple. I bought myself a, a box for my birthday, this last birthday. It's really hard to find sealed boxes of this game. It was, it was a, apparently it was a big flop. They didn't make much of it. And the rarities are like super cool. There's this rarity called the King Rare. It's my favorite rarity. And the characters are like framed in this beautiful border and they just look so dang good. So I tried to collect, I actually just finished collecting all the King Rares. I found the Saga King King Rare on eBay the other night just like randomly and snap got it and now i have all the king rares but um i really like the decisions they were making and, and and eventually they did announce the one piece card game so i kind of tried to start theorizing about okay so like if this is what they're doing in these games what are they going to do in this game now that they have all this technology you know bandai has done the market research on how to make a good card game so they're clearly ready to make a good card game oh we got the blossom still here's our blossom from the last box Oh, bless him, be shrimp him. What are we getting here? I, I don't think you can get a, a like a regular secret and an alt art in the same box. Yeah, not so far. I'll try and remember if you do. I don't. I don't remember exactly what the ratios and rarities of Japanese stuff is because I've opened so many English things and took a lot of notes on opening the English stuff so I can know exactly what's in there. But 
um, I started opening all these different games and really theorizing about, you know, okay, what is this game going to look like? Bless them. Are they going to use the approach of using this full art? Are they going to use like text boxes? You know, are they, what kind of artists are they going to use? Are they going to just use stuff from the manga? Are they going to use stuff from the anime? Are they going to use, you know, what combination of things is going to lead them to making whatever it is that they're going to end up making. And the One Piece card game ended up being so much cooler than I could have ever imagined. I mean, the, co the combination of artistic approaches, different sorts of perspectives, framing, styles, like there's just so much in this game and the decisions were so insanely cool for how it all came together. I love it so much and it really inspired me to start making some of the art myself. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to find images that I like and make cards because I really started thinking about cards as art, you know, using the frame of a card to display something within that space that conveys a message about the thing that's in that image in a way that you want to convey it by using the framing of the card to show that thing. So I, uh, I hung out with my friend David who makes custom cards for Dragon Ball and he showed me how to make a leader because I wanted to make like a custom leader. He showed me how to do like reverse hologram technique. So I, uh, I did that. I made my first card and then I, you know, the universe just kind of brought me into meeting this guy that has his UV printer. I've told that story on a different video also. So if you want to go back and hear that story, you, you can. But I basically met this guy with this insane UV printer. It's a Mamaki flatbed UV printer. It's like one of the best printers in the world. Basically this thing prints at like 1200 DPI. I went in and started printing with him and he was kind of amazed at what I could print because really I'm a printer. It's what I do. That's my artistic identity as I've been, you know, I was a screen printer in college. I'm about as old as the color printer. I've printed more or less on everything under the sun from t-shirts to shoes. Um, and uh, I really like um, printing. So he was impressed with what I was printing. He wanted to start a business with me. Um, a bunch of things happened. Eventually he moved the printer into my studio. So the printer is in my uh, studio where I usually make clothes. And I started printing and printing and exploring and expanding. And um, you know, I've, I think I've made somewhere around 150 designs since August. I've printed around 30,000 cards. I um, have just made an insane amount of stuff. Oh, there's our Sanji Don. Uh, insane amount of stuff I've made so 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 many things and um, that's really you know how I feel like I've developed my style um, everything that I've made by the way is pretty much available on uh, kaizokucards.com and um, I ended up reconnecting uh, is this a secret oh katakuri shorori katakuri there we go we got one uh, one of each of the secrets in this video and this and my secrets about how to get nasty at whatever it is that you do um, so yeah, I, uh, you know, started printing a lot of stuff and I developed a printing technique with this printer that is different than what anybody else in the world is doing because these printers are like Ferraris, like the dealers know all of the printers that are out there basically. And, um, you know, they came to see what I was doing and they were like, dude, there's nobody else on the planet that's doing what you're doing with this thing. And it's cool because I'm able to create something that's totally unique. I actually um, designed a specific kind of cardstock for this printing method. I work with a manufacturer in China to make that cardstock. Um, and it's a unique material that um, allows for me to print in the way that I do and print what I do. So I figured out how to make a card that, um, you know, nobody else in the world is making this kind of card, which makes it unique. And, you know, I do them just myself and I do it because I'm passionate about it. And the thing for me is that I don't live off of my art. I'm a dentist. That's where I make my paycheck. Um, and it gives me freedom in what I want to do. I don't have to make something because I think people want it. I get to make things because I like it. And I'm lucky enough to like stuff that people like. And um, Marco. And yeah, I just make a ton of things. So I guess the summary of this story is like, don't be afraid to make the mistakes when you make something. Just get out there, make it, have fun with it. And remember like, you know, if, you, if it's a hobby for you, you can turn it into a business, it's possible. But once you start taking people's money for stuff, it changes your relationship with that thing. Um, you know, I'm really trying to take the perspective with what I make that I print what I wanna print when I wanna print it. 
I post it. You can get on my website, kaizokucards.com. Um, and that's it. And if I want to reprint something and enough people want it and I want more for myself, yeah, I'll reprint it. But if not, I want to keep making new stuff. And I'm doing one piece cards right now, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be doing one piece cards forever. I'll probably explore into different things. Everything that I do usually changes every couple months. And I'm sure this will continue to do that. And my website will be a place where you can access that and get whatever creative thing I'm doing at the point in time when I'm doing it. I'm a dentist. I can't without... I can't, uh, I can't end without giving a dental tooth tip. Uh, I'm going to give another anatomy one. I like anatomy a lot. Um, third molars are weird. Some people don't have them. Some people just have three. Some people just have one. They're kind of a sign of evolution, actually, because we don't use our jaws in the same way that we do. So third molars actually don't develop in some people. Genetically, they've just become uh, like a recessive gene, essentially, and some people just don't get them. But some people still do. And if you have space in your mouth for your third molars, you should try and keep them or do orthodontic therapy so that you create the space to let them come in. Because if your third molars can come in, they it just gives you more chewing surface. It's more that you have to clean, but it also can support your soft palate, which can reduce the incidence of sleep apnea, especially in men. So if you're able to get your third molars to come in, you should. But if they're coming in impacted and there isn't space for them, you do need to get them removed. I am Joku DMD. Thank Thank you. Gozaimasu. And I'll see you guys next time. You lost not believing yourself. Sometimes you get a bag of fabric and you think, oh, there's no way that's going to fit. But if you just believed in yourself for just one second and remember that your bag was really stretchy and you have all of your friends believe in you, like Shivali at Shivali Fabrics, which you should shop at in Los Angeles. If you didn't, you'd be making a huge mistake. Trust me, it's, uh, it's tagged right on here. All you have to do is click it and you'll see where it is. And then if you and your friends believe in you and your, and your pirate legend, then of course you're gonna get the fabric in the bag. See, I know you thought it wasn't possible, but it's totally possible. And that's, that's, uh, that's Ikenen de Gomen, yow!